hi guys you're welcome back to my channel okay my name is Stella now if this is your first time coming across my video you're welcome um I will advise you stick to the end because this video is going to be very detailed now let's jump right into what we have today so we're going to be making this lovely structured mommy dress okay now with an inbuilt corset okay and um, it has a lot of sewing techniques that you don't want to miss also the neckline is queen and neckline okay remember that in my channel i have a draft of queen and neckline but in this video we're going to be making use of it okay so let's jump right into it now we're going to be working with a full scale basic bodies block okay now i'll leave the link in the description box if you don't know how to draft a full scale basic bodies block okay so it's super easy and straightforward and you guys know that i label every step of the every step of the way so it's super detailed okay but i will just run a quick recap on the block okay so um we're working with a boss 43 which i divided into four and i marked now that's my boss point okay and that's my under boss her under boss round is 37 37 divided by four is 9.25 her waist round is 37 as well divided by four is 9.25 now the blouse hip which is the circumference around where the blouse is stopping. Now we're making use of a full blouse and her blouse length that we're working with is 22.5 inches. Okay. So the circumference around where the blouse is stopping is 42 and 42 over four is 10.5. Now I added 0 0.5 allowance. So that's 11. Okay. So that's the block that we're working with. Now let's proceed with the alteration. Now the first thing we're going to do is to connect from the boss point to the neckline tip okay now the neckline we're working with is three by three so with your straight line you will connect from the boss point to the neckline tip which i just did okay now the next thing we will do is to decide um how wide i want my neckline now the width of my neckline that i'll be working with is five inches so i just marked that okay now for the depth of my neckline i want to make use of four inches okay as my debt. Now, how do you determine the extent of the coverage of your client? So I simply place my tape from the boss point to the under boss and I measure. And in this case, what I have is four inches. Now I will transfer that exact measurement from the boss point upwards. Okay. So in this case, I just added extra half. Now, if you do this, you're sure and certain that the bust of your client is fully covered. Okay. So back to our drafting, our neck, my neckline depth is four inches. Now from that, my five inches neckline width, I will come down. Okay. From that point, I will come down by 5.5 inches. Okay. Like so. Okay. So I just mark my 5.5 inches down. Okay. Now from my armhole to that 5.5 inches mark, I want the width there to be 2.75. So I just made a mark there. Now I'll come in with my curve ruler and connect to my five inches um, neck width, okay, like so, because I don't want it straight. Now I will, I'll come in with my curve, okay, and connect from from that point to my neckline width of four inches, okay. And here we have it. Now note that I can, you can always reshape your neckline. Now the next thing we need to do is to tighten that neckline so that it does not gape. So from the, the straight line that we have, I'll come in by one inch and connect that one inch to the boss point using my straight line, like so. Okay, and here we have it. Our neckline is tightened. So I will go ahead and separate um, these two patterns, okay, so that I will be able to close my neckline and also close the boss that. Okay, and here we have it. I've separated the patterns. Now let's go ahead and walk on the front pattern because that's where we have most of the alterations okay let's proceed now next thing we'll do is to mark her under boss and her under boss round is 37 37 divided by 4 is 9.25 i'll go ahead and mark my three inches first then i'll move my tape to the second that leg okay like so so from that second that leg i'll continue my measurement of 9.25 and in this case it ends exactly on the line okay so, but that notwithstanding, I will still use 0.5 to tighten my underbust. Okay. Just that in this case, I have borrowed 
0.5 okay so i'll go ahead and write that um by the side so that when it's time to um add my allowances i will remember okay remember that you're not supposed to reduce any of your measurements when you're drafting your pattern okay now i'll come in with my curve to connect my underbust measurements now you must ensure that your curve passes through um our neckline tightening okay the dart that we use to tighten the neckline to our 0 0.5 that we have on the underbust line so i'll go ahead now and um, draw my my curve okay and here we have it so we've tightened um the center part now i'll also come in with my curve and um tighten the the side that okay now ensure that your curve passes through the neckline tightening but avoid too much curves okay so i know that the line is not visible now but i will still come in with my permanent marker and highlight that but for now let's proceed to close our neckline that okay so like i always do you can either close from the center front towards the side or from the side towards the front um towards the center front either way is correct okay but i think in this video i will proceed to close from the side um to the center okay and the process is simple um you lift up your dart along the marked line okay so like i always do you lift up your line it may be a bit challenging but it's not impossible I mean that should be encouraging enough okay so you lift up your line um you lift up your pattern paper along the mat line like i'm doing okay and um you gently place it on the other that leg okay like so now i will come in with my curve to reshape my neckline now you know that you have an opportunity now to either deepen your neckline or just leave it the way it is so i'll come in with my curve now and with my pencil i will connect my curve okay back so and then i'm also using my permanent marker to highlight that and that's it so this is our neckline okay okay now if i think it's too close i can always reshape which i'm thinking to still come in what by 0 0.25 remember we had earlier marked um 2.75 okay as the width but i want to reduce that to 2.5 now okay so i just come in with my curve ruler as well slight curve and i'll reconnect it back to the shoulder okay and that's it i have reshaped um my neckline as well okay so you can always alter your neckline all right so the next thing we need to do now is to tighten our shoulder okay and how do you do that now from our marked line you just come down by 0 0.5 and i'll connect that back with a straight line to the shoulder tip okay and that's it so this is now our new shoulder line okay and not the previous one all right so um the next thing i will do is to connect my on my underbust um that legs okay to the blouse length so i'll come in with my straight line now now but before i do that remember that i i told us that i added 0 0.5 to my blouse hip measurement so i'll go ahead and divide that 0 0.5 into two and that's 0 0.25 on each side so i just marked that now i'll come in with my straight line and connect my underbust um that to that 0 0.25 that we just marked okay now this will take care of every form of bulge that you have especially if you have a little bit of tummy okay but it works for everyone all right so and here we have it i've connected my dart legs okay now we'll go ahead and close our boss dart but to do that remember the principle you have to open a dart to be able to close another dart so i will go ahead and cut to the boss point okay which i just did now I will close my boss that and you remember the process you raise your dart along the marked line okay and then you rest it um on the boss point line okay then i'll come in with my paper tape and i will place that okay on it for now because we may still take that off for any form of reshaping okay so and here we have it now if you look at the side you will see that it's not meeting Okay, so it's simple. I'll come in with my curve ruler, or you can use a straight um, ruler, anyone. So I will just connect. 
But you remember our 0 0.5 that we borrowed to tighten our underbust. Now it's time for us to try and um, and um, recover it. Okay. So I'm trying to see if I can factor that in, but that looks a bit much. So I'm only able to recover 0 0.25. Okay. So, and um, I just connected back to the chest line. So I'll bear that in mind so that when it's time for us to add our size seam allowance, I'll remember that um, we need to take in that 0 0.25. Okay. And here we have it. I've connected my pattern now. So it's equal Okay, so it's now time for me to reshape our boss that, you remember? So I'll come here with my curve. Now, ensure that your curve passes through um, our neck tightening, okay? So like so, and um, avoid too much curves. So I'll come here with my permanent marker as well, and I'll highlight that so that it will be visible for all of us to see, okay? And here we have it. I have reshaped my boss that. Now we will proceed to cut, okay? Because... Um, we are done with our markings. So you can see how easy queen and neckline is. Okay, and here we have it. I just cut out my center front. I'll do the labeling later. So I'll go ahead and cut out the size. Kindly note the lines that I'm cutting, okay? Remember our new lines? Okay, so those are the lines that I am cutting. Okay, this is very important as well. Okay, so I'm done cutting out the the side pattern front so i will i will go ahead and label okay this is very important you know so this is my center front i'll label that cf and that's my side front and i'll use my abbreviation sf so this is how we're going to join and here it is our queen and neckline is ready okay now we'll proceed to alter the back pattern so this is my back pattern now. Um, now we're going to measure her waist, okay? So what we have there from the from the back tightening, okay, to the side. Now remember that I added one inch as my dart allowance for the back, okay? So we're going to measure the entire thing that we have on the waistline. And what I have there is 10.25. Now I simply fold my tape into two to get the midpoint, okay? And I'll make a mark there. Now, I don't want my dart to be centralized, just like we usually do. I want to slant my line this time around, okay? But we'll come to that um, later. Now, let's go ahead and alter. Um, let's tighten our neckline first. So to tighten the back neckline, you come in, you come down by 0 0.25, okay? And you remember our neck width for the front, 5 inches. We'll also need to mark that on the back as well, okay? So our neck width on the back is 5 inches. And then the neck depth for the back is also two inches, okay? So um, I'll go ahead and connect these measurements. So I'm connecting my my new neck depth of two inches to um, my neck width of five inches, okay? Okay, so I'll come in with my curve and I'll connect the necklines. Okay, and here we have it. Um... I just connected so i'll come in with my permanent marker as well and i'll highlight the line all right so i'll go ahead and tighten my new neckline with 0.25 remember we tightened the, the front with 0.5 but for the back i will use 0.25 to tighten the neckline and i'll use my straight line to connect that um to the shoulder tip and here we have it so this is now my new neckline okay now um from that, my new neckline, I'll come down by three inches, okay? So for this style, I will be making use of buttons. So I'll come down by three inches, and from my three inches, and um, I'll go ahead on the chest line, and I'll mark 2.5. Okay, so on the chest line, I just marked my 2.5 inches. So I'll go ahead and connect that 2.5 inches to the three inches that we came down with on the um, neckline, okay? And here we have it. So uh, my yoke for the back is ready. Now I'm going to be cutting that along the chest line. Okay. So back to the dart. Remember our midpoint that we had earlier marked. So I'll go ahead and slant um, my dart. Okay. Like I told us earlier, I don't want it straight. So I'll go ahead and place my straight line, my ruler, and I'll just slant it a bit. Okay, and here we have it. Now remember, I added one inch as my dart allowance. So I'll go ahead and divide that one inch into two. So I'll mark a 0 0.5 on each side of the dart. Okay, now 
remember i also added 0 0.5 on the blouse hip okay so i'll divide that 0 0.5 into two as well and that will give me 0 0.25 so i'll mark that on each side now it's time for us to connect our dart legs so i'll connect from the chest line to meet that 0 0.5 down to the 0 0.25 on the blouse um, length okay so i'll repeat the same on the other side as well to the 0 0.25 that we have on the blouse length and here we have it our dart is ready okay and here we have it now you can go ahead and tighten the chest line if you feel it's too pointed okay so if you want to tighten you can use 0 0.25 on each side okay but i will be leaving it this way since um, my yoke is not coming below the chest line okay now um we need to tighten the blouse length okay now since we're not adding eyelet okay or loops and um in this case i'm going to be making use of zip so we need to take off 0 0.5 from that center back if you don't that side is going to bulge and that's not what you want okay so i've i have marked the 0 0.5 out okay now um i'll go ahead and mark my buttons so i'm going to be making use of five buttons so this is how my buttons are going to lay okay so i'll go ahead and cut this pattern out Okay, now before I cut it out completely, I would like to write the distance of the yoke, okay? Remember, our, our yoke is 2.5 inches away from the center back line. So I like to write these details down so that I don't get confused and start guessing, okay? Then I'll also use um, arrows to indicate the direction of the chest line, okay? So this is my CB line, that's the center back. And this is my side back line, which I'll use SB also to indicate. Now, and that's my back yoke as well. Okay, so these tiny details are very important so that anybody that looks at your pattern can easily say um, what is what. Okay, so I'll go ahead and cut out all my patterns. And um, here we have it. Now I'll proceed to cut out the yoke as well. Okay, so can you pay attention to the lines that I'm cutting? Okay. All right, so I'm done. So um, this is my back patterns. Okay. Now... I'll go ahead and transfer them to the to the fabric okay and this is the front pattern but before we transfer to the fabric we need to cross check our patterns okay to be sure that they are equal now i like to do this so that um when i transfer them to my fabric one will not be longer than the other okay so i'll go ahead and um try and match out uh, match my patterns okay so let's start with the center back and the side back so i will just try and um place them side by side to see if they are equal and they are both equal okay so i'll match my shoulders now now can you see that the front shoulder and the back is not equal okay so the back seems to be longer by 0 0.5 inch okay now i'll go ahead and mark that so i'll simply come in with my curve or just my scissors and i'll just trim that out now if you don't do this now on the pattern by the time you transfer to the fabric, it will be a bit of a struggle, okay? So, and here it is, they are both equal now. So, I'll come in with my other patterns as well. Now, it's time for us to match the sides. So, I'll come in with the side front and the side back, okay? So, I'll place them. Now, there's another thing I also like to do. First of all, the two patterns are equal. So, the side front and the side back is equal but i would like to shape them okay i don't want them looking this um block form so um from the dart leg first of all from the side i'll go up by 1.5 inches okay so i'll go up by 1.5 inches on the side back and on the side front as well now this is optional you can go ahead and leave yours this way but i think it, it, it adds to the comfort of the dress okay so I will go ahead and um, I'll mark 0 0.5 inch away from the dart leg because I don't want it looking all pointed when I'm done joining. Okay, so I'll go ahead and mark my 0 0.5 inch there. Then I'll come in with my curve and I'll connect to that part. Okay, so 
I'll go ahead and use my scissors and I'll cut out the mark line out. Okay, and here we have it. We have altered the side front. So we'll repeat the same on the back. From that, that leg, I'll come in by 0 0.5. Okay, and I'll connect with my curve. From that 0 0.5, we marked to the 1.5 inches by the side. And here we have it. Now I'll try and match the two side pieces to be sure that they are equal. And as you can see, the front is a bit longer than the back. Okay, it's a bit longer than the back. So I'll just go ahead with my scissors and I'll trim that out. Okay, you can go ahead and leave it, but I mean, what will it cost to just ensure that it's equal now? Okay, so now my patterns are equal. So let's proceed to the skirt alteration. All right, so this is a basic skirt block. Okay, now I have a video on my channel on how to draft a basic a, a basic skirt. Okay, so I'll leave the link in the description box if you don't know how to draft a basic skirt. Okay, so I already drafted this for my clients. I mean, the dress is for the same person, so I must I must as well go ahead and use the same. So um, this is my dart. Now I will be sewing my dart on the fabric. Okay, so that's my my waistline, my hip line, my knee. Then the full length now to the allowance um i added extra five inches like i mentioned i don't like adding my allowance to the fabric i like to add my allowance especially um on the length okay on my pattern so that when we slash because we're going to be doing slash and spread i won't have to bother myself with adding allowance to the length okay now for the waist of the back okay now for the center back i sloped the waistline by one inch okay and i also added my half inch sewing allowance up there so that's just the major um alteration that we did on this pattern okay so um we will, now i'll keep this aside and we will start with the front pattern okay so for my front pattern i went ahead to close my dart as well because i don't like stitching down my darts on the fabric okay so i've closed my dart now um i sloped the center front by 1.5 inches now the reason for this sloping is to eliminate every form of bulge or smile lines okay that appears on your dress okay now um this will give you that flat tummy effect or that clean finish okay so this is a must for every um, outfit whether it's just a skirt or it's a dress it's a must okay so i also have my hip line my knee line my full length and the allowance okay so i'll go ahead and keep the back um skirt block aside so so that we can alter the front okay so we're starting with the front pattern okay so i'll go ahead and measure now remember that this is the center front line okay so i'll go ahead and measure the knee line and um, the full length because we need to get the midpoint. So um, the entire knee line is 9 inches. Half of it is 4.5. So I've marked that. Now on the allowance as well, it's 9 inches. Half of it is 4.5. Now I'll use my straight line and I'll connect that point. So here we have it. Now we need to slash this line. Okay. So we will slash it towards the side front. Okay. Remember that this is the center front line. So we are slashing towards the side front only remember that this is the front pattern as well so you will slash but you are not going to cut through okay so here we have it now um we will transfer this to the lining now i will advise you first cut on the lining then you cut on your door face satin or your raw silk um as your interlining before you transfer lastly to the main fab fabric okay all right guys so in our next video um we'll be transferring all our patterns to the fabric okay and we will cut all right so and i will see us thank you for watching kindly subscribe like and share okay and i'll see you in my next video bye